Hey guys, welcome back to Diving Squid's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be using Flowlab.io, which is an online game making resource. So today we're going to be making an animation that goes from idle to a second idle state to a run state. So you're going to want to click new game or you can do that once you've seen the example. So I'm just going to load up the example. And you can see that the deer starts off idle and then um, using the arrow keys or the D key I can make him run and then the deer stops and then 5.5 seconds later the deer will eat grass and then resume its idle pose and then I can make it run again and this can just continue. So you're going to want to head over to the My Games section and create a new game. I've already got one loaded up, but if you have an already existing one, you can add to it. You don't have to do a deer, you can choose to do anything, but for this example I'm going to do a deer. And you can see I've already got a basic scene set up with some ground that's set to solid and nothing else and the player character which is set to movable, affected by gravity and solid. I've got three animations, you're, you're going to want to have three animations, an idle, a second idle pose, and a run animation for this tutorial. I'll play them all, this is the eating grass, and this is the run. So you're going to want to head into behaviours to start with. And you're going to make sure you check these, because otherwise the player won't move. You're going to first of all want to create a keyboard trigger, and you can set this to whatever key you want. I'm going to set mine to D, but yours could be the arrow keys. Next, you're going to want to create a number. And you're going to want to set this to whatever number you want. This number is going to be the move right number. And I'm going to set mine to 6 because that's what I prefer. But really it doesn't matter. It's just the speed. You're going to want to connect the down to in. Now you're going to want to create a velocity property. You're going to want to connect the out to x. This is going to make it move x. If you'd like it to move to the left, you must change the number to a negative. Now I'm going to make a collision trigger set to any. And I'm going to connect this to A switch set to off and I'm gonna set the hit trigger to the on. Next I'm gonna make another keyboard trigger. I'm gonna set this to the space key but this can be whatever you want your player to jump with. You're gonna make sure repeating is turned off and repeating is turned on for the movement key. You're going to want to connect the up trigger to the off on the switch. And then you're going to want to add another number, and this is going to be the jump force. Again, this can be to personal preference. I prefer 5. You're going to want to connect the down to the input. Then you're going to want to connect out background to the in button on the switch. Next you're going to want to make an impulse button and this will get your player jumping. You want to connect the out to the y axis and then we can test this out and see that our player runs and jumps. But it looks quite boring. Now we're going to add the animation. 
you can also see that the camera doesn't scroll. So first of all, you want to go into properties, and you want to create, wait, sorry, components, and you want to create a camera. You don't need to connect this to anything, just add the right amount of blocks to fit your game. So now I'm going to hit play just to test it's working and you can see that the camera scrolls with the player. It will be more obvious if your game has a background and you can still jump. But it's currently looking a bit bland so now we're going to want to add the animations that we created earlier. Again if you don't have these you might want to pause the video and make some animations just now because that really makes your game more playable. So now we're going to want to make an always trigger and we're going to want to connect this to the animation property. You want to set this animation to your basic IO pose. Make sure it's on loop animation and the priority is set to zero. You want to connect the out to the start action. And I'm going to move this down here so you can see more. Next, we're going to create the second idle pose and the run animation. You're going to want to drag this above your run stuff and set the animation to run. Make sure the priority is set to 2 and it's checked loop animation. Now you want to connect the up trigger to the stop function on your run animation. You're going to want to connect the out trigger to the start animation function. Now you're going to want to create a timer. First off, we'll check that this works. So you can see that the deer runs and jumps and resumes its idle pose, but still doesn't eat grass. So now what we're going to do is go into behaviors and create a timer trigger. You're going to want to set this because it defaults to one second. You're going to, I'm going to set this to 55 but again this is personal preference. You're going to want to connect the up trigger from your keyboard to the start timer. You're going to want to create an animation and this is going to play your second idle animation. So connect the out to start and change it to idle 2 and make sure loop animation stayed unchecked and the priority is 1. Now you can see that the deer stop so when you stop running and 5.5 .5 seconds later, eats grass. And it will continue to eat grass if your player stays idle for long enough. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this and want more content.